On the 20th of March 1962, Aldous Huxley, author of the book Brave New World, published 30 years earlier in 1932, gave a speech at University College Berkeley about what he saw as elements of the book coming true in the modern technological world. 60 years after that speech, and the book's projection of the world's population being hypnotised to love their servitude continues to evolve. Well now, in regard to this problem of, of the ultimate revolution, uh, in the past, we can say that all revolutions have essentially aimed at changing uh, the environment in order to change the individual. Well, I mean, there's been the political revolution, the economic revolution, the religious revolution. Uh, all these uh, aimed, as I say, not directly at the human being, but at his surroundings. Today, uh, we are faced, I think, with the approach of what may be called the ultimate revolution, the final revolution, where a man can act directly on uh, the mind-body of his fellows. This has generally been uh, of a violent nature, but that if you are going to control any population for any length of time, you must have some measure of consent. Well, it seems to me that the, the nature of the ultimate revolution with which we are now faced is precisely this that we are in process of developing a whole series of techniques which will enable the controlling oligarchy, who have always existed and presumably always will exist, uh, to get people actually to love their servitude. Uh, this is, the, seems to me, the, the ultimate in malevolent revolution, shall we say. And uh, this, is a, this is a problem which... Uh, has interested me for many years and about which I wrote uh, Brave New World. Since then I have uh, continued to be extremely interested uh, in this problem and I have noticed uh, with increasing dismay that uh, a number of the predictions which were purely fantastic when I made them 30 years ago uh, have come true or, or seem in process of coming true. That if you can uh, get people to consent to the state of affairs in which they are living, the state of servitude, the state of being having their differences ironed out and being made uh, amenable to mass production methods on the social level, if you can do this, then you have uh, you are likely to have a much more stable and much more lasting society, a much more easily controllable society than you would if you were relying wholly on clubs and firing squads and concentration camps. But I think that uh, insofar as uh, dictators become more and more scientific, more and more concerned with a technically perfect, uh, perfectly running society, uh, they will be more and more interested in the kind of techniques which uh, uh, I imagined and described from existing realities uh, in Brave New World. Well, uh, this, as I say, is, is in this field of, of pure persuasion. I think we, uh, we do know much more than we did in the past, and obviously we now have uh, uh, mechanisms for multiplying the demagogue's voice and image in a quite hallucinatory way. I mean, the television and the radio, this alone, of course, is, uh, creates an enormous gulf between the modern and the ancient demagogue. And the ancient demagogue could only appeal to as many people as his voice could reach by the yelling of his utmost, but uh, the modern demagogue can touch literally millions at a time. And, and of course, with his multiplication of his image, he can produce this kind of hallucinatory effect, which uh, uh, is of, uh, of enormous hypnotic and uh, suggest, uh, suggestive importance. I said this is peculiarly important uh, because as one sees in looking back over history, we have allowed in the past all those advances in technology which have profoundly changed a social and individual life, we've allowed them to take us by surprise. 
I mean, it seems to me that uh, during the late 18th century and early 19th century, when the uh, new machines were making possible the factory system, it was not beyond the wit of man to see what, what was happening and to project into the future, and maybe to forestall the um, really dreadful consequences which had plagued uh, England and most of Western Europe and most of this country uh, for about 50 or 60 years, the, uh, the horrible abuses of the factory system. I mean, if uh, a certain amount of forethought had been devoted to the problem at that time, if people had, first of all, found out what was happening and then used their imagination to see what might happen, and then had gone on to work out means by which the worst applications of the new techniques should not take place, well, then I think uh, Western humanity might have been spared about three generations of utter misery which was imposed upon the poor at that time. And uh, similarly with the various uh, technological advances now, I mean, it's quite clear we have to start thinking very, very hard about the problems of automation. And again, I think we have to think still more profoundly about the problems which may arise in relation to these new techniques which may contribute uh, to the, this ultimate revolution. Our business is to be aware of what is happening, then to use our imaginations to see what might happen, how this might be abused, and then, if possible, to see that the enormous powers which we now possess thanks to the scientific and technological advances, shall be used for the benefit of human beings and not for their ultimate degradation.